cylinder dredges up mud from the seabed in the form of long cores. The types of tiny fossils found at different levels in the core shows the sea temperatures of the past. Geologists have collected enough sea cores to form a detailed history of climate during the last million years. Dr. James Hayes leads the research. The climatic record in these deep sea cores tells us that there have been eight ice ages in the last 700,000 years. It also tells us when they have occurred. There are many enigmatic, astonishingly well-executed ancient ruins found all over the world. With some regions in particular displaying overwhelming masses of evidence supporting the posit of a past highly advanced builder, these areas often littered with displays of incredible ancient feats. Yet our next place of interest possesses some of the most incredible rock-cut chambers to be found anywhere. And just like that of the Giza Plateau or the Inca Trails of Peru, Turkey, along with its ancient counterpart Lebanon, still contains a smorgasbord of ancient uparts, mystifying masonry skills, and gigantic stone trilithons all found within what would appear to have been a major settlement of this now lost civilization. The reason why we attest to many of Earth's ruins, having once been the work of a past now lost civilization, is the number of unexplainable features nearly always discovered at these puzzling ruins. Therefore, to understand that all the knowledge utilized to build such sites, the methods for lifting such stones conveniently forgotten is to suspect that they were, instead, the work of an equally forgotten civilization. It appears to be a logical hypothesis to pursue, one which we indeed have been, which we have found bared much fruit. We believe we have now amassed enough evidence to support our claim beyond any reasonable doubt, subsequently discovering a far more fitting tale of events in regards to the true origins of many of the world's largest of ancient ruins. Hattusa is a melting pot of baffling construction techniques and surviving ancient artifacts. Within permitted timelines, the site predictably has a well-explored period of inhabitation. Yet any explanation as to how these more recent ancestors achieved its construction conveniently eludes modern academia. Hattusa was also known to have been the capital of the Hittite Empire in the Late Bronze Age added to the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1986. The main focus of this video, however, is in relation to a rather curious anomaly at the site, a unique object, which could be described as an out-of-place rock cut. Known as the Green Rock of Hattusa, this mysterious stone's origin, or perhaps more importantly, its past function, is unknown. The green stone was once so perfectly polished it originally had a mirror finish. Yet why this particular stone is here, why they chose this green stone specifically, or who brought it to the site, is a complete mystery. There are many other impressive features found at the site, including holes bored through massive megaliths with seemingly laser-like precision. It also has the ruins of what has been confirmed to have once been a sphinx. All of these characteristics indicate that, at one time, in the very distant past, Hattusa was a place of significant importance, sharing an uncanny amount of similarities in build technique and layout to many sites of South America, yet its green stone is unique to this site only. The question is why? Why was this green stone quarried, cut, placed where it lay, then polished to perfection? Was the stone merely a gift from an Egyptian pharaoh, as modern academia would have you believe? Or did the green stone of Hattusa once serve a more profound purpose? One day, we will find out. It is an object which we find highly compelling. Chufut Kale is an astonishing ancient city, argued by mainstream historians as dating back only to medieval times. However, this we suspect is possibly due to it being documented during this time as having served as a fortress within the Crimean Mountains, a national monument of Crimean Karaitis culture. Although argued to be fairly recent archaeology, we believe, however, 
that upon closer inspection, a far more intriguing, far older story for its origins begins to appear. Identifiable advanced features so often discussed here on our channel, found throughout the ancient world, remnants indicative of a far older, far greater, technologically advanced group having once been responsible. A group who had access to knowledge and stone-cutting technology that has not only left the same signature scars all over the planet, an investigative undertaking we have previously explored regarding similarities and differentiations to identify signature methods, an ongoing investigation in an attempt to identify separate lost, highly advanced civilizations, and most importantly, how many there were. The site was clearly built by a group who were also capable of quarrying and placing enormous stones, sometimes over 1,000 tons in weight, atop one another. Many people are aware of the remarkable underground city known as Derinkuyu, a settlement we have covered in the past. A gigantic ruin carved straight down 80 meters into the bedrock, rumored to have been lit using a pipe system which teased natural gases out of the strata lighting a candle-sized flame at regular intervals throughout its entire structure. We know of this amazing ruin due to its incredible rediscovery. When a local purchased a property in the area, he set about doing some renovations. However, upon knocking down a wall in the house, he was confronted with the entrance to an amazing site. This in turn attracted the media, thus Darren Kuyu's public popularity, regardless of its controversial nature, was cast in stone, with rather difficult to explain origins. However, Chufut Kale, although itself a partially underground, partially above ground, yet no less incredible ancient city, also carved with incredible precision from the bedrock of Earth. The site was discovered and studied in depth initially by mainstream funded individuals. As such, predictably, it has subsequently been little shared publicly. This, regardless of its incredible nature, its prehistoric appearance, and the fact that it even appears to be older than its more famous counterpart, Derinkuyu. The site is largely ignored, and this is undoubtedly due to the institutionalized powers that be, who constantly monitor and thus control the financial incentives. Anyone requesting exploratory funding whether within such fields as education, archaeology, or history, will simply be refused any application for a funded expedition. This reluctance to approve any in-depth public exploration of the site has long kept the lid on these ruins, and we feel for good reason. For although Chufut Kale was once masterfully carved from solid stone, created to house many hundreds of families and individuals, the erosion present on the site is also staggering. Many of the once refined chambers are slowly losing their form and returning to nature, with some caverns seemingly identical in appearance to many sites academia would simply dismiss as natural formations. Yet regardless of this dismissal and the deliberate overlooking of its grandeur by certain fields of study, we find Chufut Kale highly compelling. Archaeologists have discovered yet another ancient anomaly, which has linked a now lost but once clearly advanced global civilization. Pertaining to a wall relief in Peru, belonging to the oldest civilization in the Americas. The wall, although dated to approximately 3,800 years ago, depicts what many now believe is an illustrated narrative of the difficulties they experienced prior to a cataclysm caused by an ancient climate change. One meter high and 2.8 meters long, the wall relief was discovered in the seaside archaeological site of Vichama, 110 kilometers north of Peru's capital, Lima. The Vichama site is part of the recently discovered, yet now lost, Caral civilization, also known as Norte Chico. Dated at over 5,000 years ago, this dating alone makes it the oldest civilization known to have dwelled within the Americas, now claimed as purely coincidental. This civilization flourished around the same time as that of the thriving civilization of Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, and also Chinese civilizations. 
The Corral civilization was located in the Supi Valley, along the north-central coast of Peru. Made of adobe, a clay-like material, the wall seemingly documents climate change, one which could not have been contributed to by human activities. Archaeologist Ruth Shandy, who oversaw the excavations at the site, hypothesized that the serpents within represented a water deity that irrigated the earth and made seeds grow. She believes the relief was likely done towards the end of a drought and famine, that the Corral civilization, among others we have covered in the past, once experienced with other reliefs displaying emaciated humans. Many self-funded archaeologists now believe, like we have postulated, that the discovery reinforces the notion that these early humans were depicting the difficulties they faced due to climate change and a depletion in available water for irrigation, which had a large impact on their agricultural production. The excavation has, to date, unearthed the ruins of 22 buildings in a 25-square-hectare space. It would appear that, just like that of the site of Tikal and the now-lost plaque which once depicted the dramatic scene of a cataclysm, a great flood, along with erupting volcanoes, with a boat seemingly attempting to escape this event, surrounded by many of the population drowning, a cooperating artifact fortunately photographed before its mysterious disappearance. Was there indeed a great flood? One which seemingly followed a great famine? It would seem the evidence for such an event is mounting, thanks to not only the evidential sediments which once drenched many of the still unexplained ancient sites of the world, but also by its depiction by those who lived through it. It is, indeed, a highly compelling mystery. The Dighton Rock A 40-ton boulder in Massachusetts, USA, is a mysterious relic indeed. Not only does it not fit in with the surrounding environment, but the incredibly ancient inscriptions found upon it could unlock highly controversial truths regarding the reach of ancient civilization that would fly in the face of current academic theory. What is interesting regarding this enormous rock is that it was not only placed where it now lay by natural geologic activities many millennia ago, dropped where it lay on the shores of the Taunton River by the melting of an ancient glacier during the end of the last ice age, measuring 5 feet high, 9.5 feet wide, and 11 feet long, made of gray-brown crystalline sandstone. But no one has been able to say with certainty who first wrote upon the rock, what they wanted to communicate, or why they created these mysterious markings, with it now known to have been the inspiration for over 1,000 books and articles and the basis for over 35 hypotheses. The mystery, and indeed debate, regarding the writings on the Dighton Rock continue to this day. And a possible motivation for the mystery to remain unsolved is to protect the currently attested academic theories regarding the past of man. Thus, they could quite possibly be markings left by a past, now lost civilization, or one that has long been claimed to have been unable to have had such far-reaching settlements. The antiquity of the writings is undoubtable, as many scientific investigations have proved that they are indeed very old. Yet what is hotly debated is the origins, and indeed the civilization responsible for creating them. Although, predictably, since 1680, when Reverend John Danforth visited the rock, a mainstream academically approved theory regarding the stone has been put forward and popularized by said institutions. However, the fact that the glyphs, or possible language etched upon the rock, has never been deciphered remains. After seeing it, he decided that the carvings on it were made by Native Americans specifically the Wampanoag Indians, after being told the tale of a ship arriving, and a battle between the locals and mysterious newcomers were told to him from long ago in the distant past. Danforth drew the symbols visible on the top half of the petroglyph, and then wrote, quote, It is reported from the tradition of the old Indians that there came a wooden house with men of another country in it, swimming up the river Asinet, that fought the Indians and slew their sachem. 
Such interpret the figures to be hieroglyphical, the first figure representing a ship without mast and mere rack cast upon the shoals, the second representing a head of land, possibly a cape with a peninsula." End quote. Danforth's drawings were requested by the Royal Society of London in 1732 and are now preserved in the British Museum. This, not only proof of their acceptance by mainstream academia, possibly due to its lack of any controversial claims, just a simple mention of newcomers, and no further mention of their possible identity. Yet the fact that these inscriptions remain undecipherable makes the possibility of the newcomers being from a locality nearby illogical, and suggests that they were, instead, created by a group who came from a now lost or possibly concealed advanced civilization. Another hypothesis put forward by Isra Stiles in 1767, while he was the president of Yale College, claimed that the famous seafarers, the Phoenicians, had made their way all the way to North America on at least one voyage. Stiles believed that the writings were left by them to simply show that they were once there. Stiles' idea was a popular one in Europe for some time, and were embraced by Antoine Corte Gebelin, a French scholar, as a possible answer to the identity of their creators. He said that the carvings on the rock should be split into three sections, the past, present, and future. Some of the images he identified were an oracle and butterfly, representing the future, a horse and a beaver meeting, symbolical representations of the two contents interacting in the present, and the divine figures or symbols of Minerva, Telesphore, and Priapus, representative of the past. Yet the mystery of who created the carvings remains to this day. Additionally, the original location of the carvings also remains a mystery. The fact that the boulder has landed where it now lay, due to geological activities, means it could have originated in a location far away from where it now lay. Was it made by a now lost civilization? Or possibly one that academia continues to claim was not able to travel such vast distances? The mystery surrounding the Dighton Rock continues, and it is undoubtedly one that is highly compelling.